adding and subtracting fractions with common denominators. Remember that whenever we're adding or subtracting fractions, they must have a common denominator. Here we'll look at a few examples of adding and subtracting fractions that do have common denominators. There are five main things we need to remember when adding or subtracting fractions with common denominators. Firstly, the denominator in the answer is the same as the denominator in the fractions we're starting with. For example, if we're adding three-fifths and one-fifth, the denominator of the answer will be five. The second thing is, when we're adding fractions, we add up the numerators in the fractions we're starting with to get the numerator in our answer. For example, when adding three-fifths and one-fifth, we add the numerators three plus one to give us four. So three-fifths plus one-fifth is equal to four-fifths. If we're subtracting fractions, we just subtract the numerators in the fractions we're starting with to get the numerator in our answer. For example, if we're subtracting 5 thirteenths from 8 thirteenths, we subtract the numerator 5 from the numerator 8 to give us the numerator 3 in our answer. So 8 thirteenths minus 5 thirteenths is equal to 3 thirteenths. The fourth thing we must remember is, if the resulting fraction can be reduced, we must always reduce it to its lowest terms. For example, if we're subtracting 6 fifteenths from 11 fifteenths, 11 minus 6 is 5, so the answer comes out to 5 fifteenths. But notice that both 5 and 15 can be divided by 5 to give us whole numbers. 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1, and 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3. So the answer in its lowest terms is the fraction 1 third. To summarize, 11 fifteenths minus 6 fifteenths equals 5 fifteenths, which is reduced to 1 third. The fifth thing we must consider is, if the resulting fraction is an improper fraction, that is the numerator is larger than the denominator, then we must convert it to a mixed number. For example, let's say we're asked to add 3 fifths to 3 fifths. The denominator of the sum of these is 5. To find the numerator of our sum, we add up the numerators 3 plus 3, which equals 6. So our sum is the fraction 6 fifths. But because the numerator 6 is greater than the denominator 5, this is an improper fraction, which we must convert to a mixed number. We start by dividing 5 into 6. 5 goes into 6 one time, so we write the whole number 1 here. To find the remainder, we go 5 times 1 equals 5 and write it here. Now we subtract the 5 from the numerator 6 to get the numerator of our remainder which is 1. The denominator of our remainder is the same as the denominator of the improper fraction, which is 5. So our final answer to the sum of 3 fifths plus 3 fifths is 1 and 1 fifth. Let's do another example of adding. We have 4 sevenths plus 5 sevenths. We start by looking at the denominators. We see these fractions have a common denominator of 7. This means we can add these fractions up the way they are and the sum of these will be a fraction which has the denominator of 7. To find the numerator of our sum, we just add up the numerators 4 plus 5 to give us a total of 9. So the answer to our question is 4 sevenths plus 5 sevenths equals 9 sevenths. But notice that 9 sevenths is an improper fraction. Its numerator 9 is larger than its denominator 7. We'll need to convert it to a mixed number. 7 goes into 9 one time. 7 times 1 is equal to 7. To find the remainder, we take 9 minus 7, which equals 2. And the denominator is still 7. So the improper fraction 9 sevenths is equal to 1 and 2 sevenths. And this is the final answer to our question, 4 sevenths plus 5 sevenths. We can also use models to illustrate this question. The pie is divided into seven equal sections. To represent four sevenths, 
we color in four of the seven sections. Now we add five sevenths, which we represent by filling in five of the seven sections. Adding all these sections we have and numbering them like this, we see we have nine sections all together. And each section represents one seventh, so we have nine sevenths. The only way we can fit all nine sections into circles is to have one full circle with seven sections and another circle with two sections colored in. The filled circle represents the whole number one. And the second circle has two of its seven sections colored in, so it represents the fraction two sevenths. So our final answer is one and two sevenths, shown both by the models and by the numbers. To review, when we're adding or subtracting fractions with a common denominator, the denominator of the answer is the same as that of the fractions we're adding or subtracting. Then if we're adding fractions, we just add up their numerators. But if we're subtracting fractions, we subtract their numerators. Don't forget, if the resulting fraction can be reduced, we must reduce it to its lowest terms. And finally, if the resulting fraction is an improper fraction, we must convert it to a mixed number. Music